Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We have to ask ourselves the question today, what are these ratings and what is EA Sports doing with these new ratings on FIFA 21 Ultimate Team? I wanna take a look at some of the cards that we got yesterday, some of the confirmed ratings, maybe some of the unconfirmed, maybe speculative ratings as well, kind of put some knowledge in your guys' minds with that, and also just talk about why did EA do what they did with some of these ratings? Because a lot of cards got downgraded today. A lot of stats themselves, especially pace, uh, was downgraded on so many different cards. So I want to talk about that, why EA did what they did, and maybe what they're kind of going for with some of these downgrades on statistics and some of the cards in the top 100. And then, of course, some of the cards ratings that were released today um, from some of the popular clubs throughout the world. There was a lot of clubs, Liverpool, Manchester City, Tottenham Hotspur, uh, tweeting out, actually, Real Madrid, uh, tweeting out or putting Instagram stories out of their um, of their clubs with their squads and, and with those ratings. So we'll talk about some of that as well. Uh, but again, today was the day, right? The ratings collective is what ea sports is calling this and by the way just so we can start this off at the beginning you can actually become a data reviewer for the ratings collective there's a website it's uh fifa ratings collective.ea.com you can actually work for ea register your interest and be a part of this all right maybe we need to get some guys from the youtube community inside of ea sports working on this stuff so that we have some sensible ratings you know Players like Nabry and Sancho going down like seven pace from the prior year. It just doesn't make sense, right? But I want to talk about why I think EA did what they did with some of this stuff today. Getting into the ratings database now, of course, uh, confirmed and sent by EA Sports. We only have the top 100 players. The rest are coming from social media. So, you know, use it and take with whatever caution you, you may will there. It may not be 100% accurate. All the stuff that you see on Twitter, on Instagram, all the edits and stuff like that, just be careful with it. For now, what you can believe the most is the top 100 ratings that are right here. And you can believe whatever like a club has posted as well. Like there's a picture of uh, Real Madrid. I'll show you that in a second. That's pretty believable since they're the ones that are posting it. But Messi is a 93. Ronaldo is a 92 lower than their ratings from last year and this is the biggest thing right you saw a lot of overall ratings decreases decreases on a lot of these cards and i think there's a common theme here why you saw decreases in individual stats and why you saw decreasing um overall card stats as well uh we are heading into fifa 21 that is going to be using a new dynamic method according to ea sports there's going to be a new dynamic method that they're gonna to use to make moments items. Now, whatever that means, if it's team of the week, if it's promo cards coming up in the future, they're gonna be upgrading individual in-game stats, not just the stats on the card, right? So let's say Harry Kane gets an inform, they might update and they might upgrade uh, his passing, his long passing for a certain pass that he made during the game. We're not entirely sure how that's gonna work out yet, but I think that's one of the reasons why EA made the ratings lower this year is because they're giving themselves room to make more and more promos and make more and more and different types of special cards where they haven't even before. And we, we even saw this last year, right? Some of the ratings last year were like, yo, it's a downgrade, right? And we keep having bigger downgrades every single FIFA. And it honestly, in my opinion, has to do with um, EA Sports knowing that they're going to run so many promos this year that they have to make the cards low rated enough so that they when, when they give them a boost, it's a decent boost and you realize it and it makes you want to want to go out and spend FIFA points or to spend coins to go get that card right away. Um, and that's kind of what their whole plan is with doing this, right? Because they're making the players low enough so that they don't get to a too high of a rating too quickly that EA puts out a lot of special cards for Sterling or every year or a lot of special cards for a Harry Kane or an Aubameyang or maybe since they've decreased the stats on Nabry and Sancho so much that they actually think that Sancho and Nabry are going to get a lot of special cards this year, you know? That's kind of where I think EA is coming from with a lot of these downgrades and a lot of these stats that you're seeing that are just a lot lower than what they were in the past, right? Let's take a look at Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, who is a very popular name that is being talked about right now. Obviously, he had a great season. Great season in the Premier League last year with Arsenal in terms of goals scored and just how he performed, and he got a downgrade. Literally feels like he got snubbed here from a card that he should have been able to have. 87 rated, 93 pace, 86 shot, um, 75 passing, 
81 dribbling, 38 defense, 69 physical. So yes, yeah, some of these cards still look pretty decent, but for starter cards and what we've had in the years past, a lot of cards are not as high rated as they once were. And that's making people be a little bit disappointed and frustrated with some of these ratings. Some people were calling to yesterday the the worst ratings reveal that we've ever seen on FIFA Ultimate Team just because of some of these downgrades. Uh, and I, I understand where they're coming from, man. I really do understand where, where people are coming from with this. Um, and, and I find it very interesting that EA has taken the approach where they're basically, they're not just downgrading a few players. As a whole, the entire database, especially from the top tier meta, you know, these highest, the top 100 cards, most of these guys got, it's like they just went like this and pushed down on, they just adjusted everything down with the EA stats for all of these cards. And that's just what they're going with this year because I honestly think that just gives them more room to make more promotions, to make more money because you know that's the, their business, right? That's what they're after. And it gives them more potential to not get players ratings too high too quickly. Another thing that I also think they're doing with this is I think they're interested in trying to get away from the meta of pace and um, a lot of the cards that you saw with pace downgrades are cards that are very meta that have been very uh, overpowered or just very pacey in the past. And I think one of the reasons why they are dropping down a lot of the pace, especially on a guy like Nabry or like Sancho, um, is I think they're doing that because they're trying to bring the meta in, right? They're making cards have less pace so that maybe people aren't going to use those cards and maybe they're trying to make the gameplay a certain way this year so that maybe your players like Immobile, which right now the popular thing to talk about on, on Twitter is the fact that Immobile has more pace than Nabry and, and Jaden Sancho. So uh, it's just crazy to think about. If actually I can find Immobile... Here in this list and show you mobile has 84 pace man 84 pace for this card is an 87 rated striker it's crazy that he has 84 pace and that sancho has 83 and nabry has 82 that's what a lot of people are looking at but i think it's these two things together ea wanting to make the meta less about pace and trying to hone that in and of course it seems like we're having another like slow type of game this year on FIFA 21, like it's going to be more of a slower play style. That's how the game is just going to play. It's going to be similar to FIFA 20. Uh, maybe EA is just wanting to, um, you know, kind of rein in what the meta really is, especially if headers are meta and some of this other stuff. Maybe decreasing some of the pace on these cards helps with that from their perspective and what they're trying to do with the gameplay. So that, and of course, with the promos and the card ratings and not getting them too high, uh, too early with a couple promo cards. Uh, that's why I think you saw the ratings like this today. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. Now let's take a look through some of these other specific ratings and look at some cards that I specifically want to talk about. And of course, where you can look into some of these ratings yourself if you're interested in that. All right. A couple tweets, right? This is from the Real Madrid Instagram, I believe. This is showing the uh, basically... What is this? This is nine players and then another nine. So 18 players from Real Madrid on the ratings here. Valverde is one that I want to talk about getting a plus uh, four boost, like a really massive boost for Valverde. That's going to be a card a lot of people look to alongside of Ferland Mendy. Such an unpackable card last year is an 80 rated is now an 83. And right before you say this, boys, I know you're thinking about where is Gareth Bale in this squad. This picture right here, I do not think that the 79 rated Gareth Bale concept card that you've seen floating around is correct. I think that Bale is actually not included in this because maybe Bale is going to be transferring. I've seen some stuff on Twitter that, you know, Real Madrid is willing to pay 50% of his salary if he does get transferred. All right. I don't know if that's even real, but I think that's why you're not seeing Bale in the squad. If Bale is 79 rated, that would be like one of the most craziest downgrades ever for the type of player that Bale is. It would not make sense for him to be a 79 rated card because that would not sell packs from FIFA for EA Sports. And it's not a true representation of Bale's uh, actual facilities on the pitch, right? So I don't think that Bale 79 card is right. Um, but we did have some other cards today that were confirmed. And I want to talk about this in the promo video. They showed Ziyech and Werner as ones to watch. We knew Werner was going to be an OTW, but now it's confirmed that Chelsea will have at least two ones to watches in FIFA 21 with Ziyech 
and with Timo Werner. So that's going to be cool. Um, hopefully they give Ziyech a weak foot, a boost. Hopefully if he's deserving of that, that'd be sick. But that's something to point out to you guys. And also Ben Yedder is going to be an 84 rated card. Supposedly, this might be, again, a leak and it might not be true. But that is the word on the street right there. And then I want to I want to run through some other downgrades and upgrades with you guys um, that are just, uh, I think, are going to actually impact the market a decent amount. Musa Sissoko. Last year, I believe he was an 81 rated as a base card. Yes, 81 rated Sissoko last year. He was 76 the year before that in FIFA 19. Uh, this is going to make his card a lot more affordable this year. I don't think this card will be 40, 50,000 coins anymore. He might still be in the range of like 20,000 coins earlier on, but he's 79 rated, so he's going to get hit with supply very fast. And if he's not as meta as he was in FIFA 20, this guy is going to end up being very cheap. Uh, and I think his price is going to be a lot cheaper this year than he was last year. Still a usable card, though, for a starter team. As a center defensive mid, big body, six foot two, very physical, uh, and can get get it done, right? For a starter player, that's a solid center mid CDM for your club in FIFA. So that's still not a bad card. And Dombele as well, if you look through some of these uh, new ratings, he's an 80 rated, so kind of the same on that card as well for some of the two popular cards from FIFA 20. I think this card is going to be a very popular one coming into the first week or two of foot 21. Real Madrid links, right? Now, if we look back at this squad really fast. Oh, I just closed the tab. Frick me. Anyways, uh, if, there's a lot of Real Madrid players that are, that are still pretty decently usable. Real Madrid having a specific partnership with EA. Their ratings boost this year as a whole. Liverpool and Real Madrid players got very good boosts. They really did. Even It's crazy to think about that, but they did. Uh, this guy going to an 83, very usable center mid, box to box. I think his work rates last year were medium, medium, if it's the same. Still a decent center mid uh, for the start of the game. I would expect him to be pretty expensive this year. Real Madrid links, of course, uh, will help him out big time. Uruguayan links aren't the best, but he's Real Madrid. He's got a really good starter card. That's going to be a card we'll watch this year a lot. Here's another one, man. If Ferland Mendy was almost unpackable as an 80 rated card last year, how is he going to be as an 83? This card got a really nice boost as well. Very pacey left back. I would not be surprised if this guy is like 50, 60, 70. Maybe that, that's kind of like the price range that I'm thinking just off the rip this year for this Furland Mendy card. Everybody's been rocking his uh, Summer Heat card or other is shapeshifter card people use this year. He is just like the left back to go to. You're going to see this in a lot of people's teams right away at the beginning of the year. People that think they're going to be able to afford him. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if this guy's 100K. If his pack weight doesn't change, this guy is going to be very, very expensive just because he is meta. People know he is meta. He's pacey. And that's going to be big in FIBA 21 because there's not a lot of pacey cards that are out there. So if you've got a pacey left back, that could be a big advantage for you in the way that you play the game. Here's another one. Big upgrade from last year over Joe Gomez. I actually sent a tweet out today about Joe Gomez. Last year, he was 80 rated. FIBA 20, he was an 80 rated card. And he was very hyped up as like a starter center back at the beginning of the game. He was like four to 6,000 coins and then dropped off hard when the full game got released. A lot of pack supply came in. That's not going to be the case this year with Joe Gomez. I would look to say he's going to be a very similar card to Davinson Sanchez last year as a center back in the Prem. Davinson Sanchez and his stats are very similar to this. So watch out for this card to be honestly 20, 30, 40, even 50,000 coins at some point. During the earlier stage of this year, he's one of the best early on budget, I guess you could say, center backs in the Prem. A lot of people will be going for. Probably a pretty good card in game as well with good stats. And then, of course, you have Nabry and then Sancho absolutely getting toasted in terms of what their ratings are this year in foot. It just kind of sucks to see an 87 rated card with one stat as a 91 and then nothing else over 83. That happens a lot, right? And it's actually, if you look through some of these players in here this year, we always look at Thomas Muller, right? Thomas Muller is always somebody who has a high rated card, which by the way, this guy didn't even get an upgrade after setting, what was it? The assist record in the Bundesliga? I don't even know what it was. He set a record this year and he doesn't get upgraded. But this is typical Thomas Muller's card fashion, man. He's an 86 rated card and has no individual statistic that is above 82. Like, how does that make sense in EA Sports? Like, this guy with his card stats right here, he should be at max an 83 or an 80, an 83 or an 82, honestly, 
with these stats put together. So I don't understand how Mueller is still in 86. I think there was somebody else in here as well. It might have been David Silva. There was another card that actually got a big downgrade from the prior year. Uh, there was a high rated that had like almost zero stats near their rating. Of course, Harry Kane's 88 dropped him down two pace. I'm not happy about that, but it is what it is. Hazard got a minus three big downgrade. And I want to show you one last thing, just to kind of talk about a lot of players in a lot of positions. Premier League left wings, there are so many of them this year, right? I was talking about Steven Bergwijn in my video a couple days ago. Think about all the left wings that we have now. We have Raheem Sterling. We have Sadio Mane. We don't have Leroy Sané anymore, but Hyun Min Sun is now a left mid this year. That's three left mids in the Prem that are 87 rated or above. We also have uh, Felipe Anderson is going to be a left mid, I believe. So that's four. But there's another one even here in the top 100 that I'm forgetting about right now. Who is it? Uh, Bergwijn is five. Oh, Marcus Rashford, 85 rated left mid. There are five left mids in the Prem that are at least 83 rated or above. And there might be more if there's any other 83 or 84 rated left mids that I might be thinking about. And that's crazy. That is a lot of left mids in the Prem. Now for right mids, we've only got Salah and we have Lucas Mora as an 83 rated right mid card. So that's kind of something that you can maybe look out for and think about and just kind of keep in mind is that right mids in the Prem might be pretty rare this year. There's the Lucas Mora. Uh, as maybe we'll get some other cards, but we'll see um, in terms of the rest of the uh, database and stuff opening up. Now, there were some other cards that got big upgrades too, right? Now, if, if we look at the, the ratings, guys, think about our cover stars, right? Think about our cover stars. We have got Mbappe, Erling Haaland, Jao Felix, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Mbappe got a plus one. Haaland went from technically a 73, where it's what he started with last year, to an 84 with great in-game stats. Um, Jao Felix got a plus one after being hurt for basically the whole year. And Trent Alexander-Arnold is a, uh, where is he at? He's an 87 rated card. Trent is an 87 rated card, which is crazy. So again, it pays to be a cover star. Again, like last year, Hazard was a cover star on the front of FIFA 20. He got a big upgrade. This year, he gets that big downgrade because he's no longer a cover star. So that definitely plays in to the ratings that were released today. So those are my thoughts on a lot of the ratings. Click around, right? Look through some of these websites. I like FootWiz and FootBin the best. They've got some of these cards that have been shown on the Instagram pages and on the Twitter pages of some of these different clubs released here. So all the cards that you will see on these websites should be confirmed. Um, and they're, they're not any speculative cards on here. This is all confirmed by either the club that these players play for, they've tweeted something out, or they're a part of the EA Sports Top 100 ratings. So definitely check some of these out. There's some, you can start to kind of figure out, hey, what are gonna be some good cards for my starter team? Uh, or what guys are gonna be expensive? What guys are just gonna be SBC fodder and stuff? kind of like that. Speaking of SBC fodder, I looked through this top 100 really fast and I wanted to kind of give you guys a breakdown of the number of 85, 86, and 87, and 88 rated cards. I got it written down right here because this is important for SBC fodder as we go throughout this year on FIFA Ultimate Team. So in FIFA 20, there were 38 85 rated cards. In FIFA 21, based on the database, there are 37. So pretty similar there. There's one big thing that I want to show you guys though with this, right? In FIFA 21 base card ratings, there are only, get this, there are only 13 86 rated cards. Only 13 86 rated cards that will be on the market to start off FIFA 20. And some of these guys aren't necessarily SBC fodder. Now, a lot of them are PK, Verratti, um, you know, Jordan Henderson, to be fair, is probably going to be fodder. Whom else? Uh, De Gea and Silva. The, David, David Silva, and DeHead, those guys are going to be mostly SBC fodder uh, from off the rip. Um, but there's only 13 86 rated in FIFA 21, as there were 18 86s in FIFA 20. There were 15 87 rated in FIFA 20, and there's 20 87 rated in FIFA 21. So an uptick on the number of 87s. And the number of 88s in FIFA 21 is down a lot. There are only 10 88 rated cards in FIFA 21. There were 17 in FIFA 20. So that's kind of interesting across the board. I think we have lower ratings everywhere. So that's kind of pushed down the amount of like gold SBC fodder that we will have. Just telling you guys right now, some of these 86s, since there's not a lot of them, PK, Verratti, Henderson, 
Hummels, David Silva, big time SBC fodder investments that are going to be fluctuating a ton this year as we get SBCs put out in this game, just because there's not a lot of 86s. Now, of course, there are a lot of 85s, a lot of 87s, uh, but the lack of 86s here will make some of these cards fluctuate a little bit more until we start to get a lot of promo cards towards the end of the year and some of that stuff involved in FIFA. So kind of a long video today, but there's a lot to digest with these ratings. We're going to have a couple more ratings videos coming out talking about these guys, maybe some weak foot skill move upgrades, some conversations on that kind of stuff as well. So stay tuned to the channel for all of that stuff. If you enjoyed this video today, give me a thumbs up and drop down below in the comments anything you have to say about ratings. There's a lot of stuff people have to say. Let me know your opinions and your questions down there. And of course, if you're new, subscribe for all daily FIFA 21 content that you will need to see. If you enjoyed this video again, I would appreciate that thumbs up. And thank you for watching. It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.